When it comes to floodgates and flood fencing, there's lots of theories, there's lots of designs, and there's lots of trials. Boy, have I got something special for you today. I'm in the Murchison region of Western Australia, a chalice station, and I'm standing on a 250 metre long floodgate in a high watershed area. I'm here to find out how this amazing floodgate has been constructed because it stands up to incredible flows that almost go over the height of this post behind me. Let's go and see the inventor and the guy that put all this together, Ash Dowden. <laughs> Ash, how you going, mate? Well, Tim. Thanks for having us out. And you're welcome. An effective floodgate starts before the floodgate at the floodgate strainer post. Absolutely correct. So Ash, this is your design for a floodgate and it's pretty unique. Can you take us through from before the start to the middle? No worries. So mate, the first thing that people have to understand is where the water's flowing from and to, isn't it? Absolutely, and generally speaking, if you can get your fence at right angles to the water flow, that's better. Mm -hmm. But in this case, our water's coming from my left and downstream is to the right. So it's running that way. Running We've that way. Right. Wire on the pressure side of the post here. That's correct. So you've got the post holding up against the wires running around against the post. This post here is a 75 mil drill rod, but you can use 80 NB galve posts, whatever for straining, straining, you know, general strainer posts, yep. anything at all. It needs to have a, a reasonable amount of strength. I wouldn't use a 50 mil. Mm -hmm. I go heavier. This 75 mil drill rod for us is. Uh, one of the ideal sorts of things that we can use. Easy to access for us. And drive it in nice and deep. And that's in more in the ground than out of the ground. I'd say that that was probably 2.1.2 to 1.4 into the ground. Okay. And in our case, we drill a hole and concrete it in rather than drive it, but you can do either or. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now what you've also got is this, it's a one point, it's called a uh, 1.2 metre double bend angle stay. And uh, the bit into the ground is about 600 into the ground from the bend, short bend at the top. Uh, they're prefabricated, we buy them off the shelf. And that's giving this post support with the weight of the wire, the weight of the water all pushing that way. What else we've got here is we've got a star picket welded on, just an any old black star picket. It's probably a second hand one that's rusted off. We've cut the bottom off. All that's here for is wire separation to, to hold your wires from sliding up and down around this post. You could do it a number of ways, but we find this is easier. But if you look at where it's welded on, it's not welded on the face, because when the wire, when the floodgate opens up back behind us, it's going to be putting pressure onto the sharp edge of, a, of, of the star picket. So what we've done is we've angled the star picket around the side a bit, so the pressure of the wire is actually on the, uh, the post, and it gives a bigger surface of You've pressure. almost got a round surface area for the wire to stretch around, haven't you? That's correct, and because we're on too much of an angle to put a normal clip on, we've just twitched that on with wire. Now your floodgate doesn't s stop the normal fence here and start a new fence, you've just run continuous wires right through. The longer the strain either side of your floodgate, uh, the more flex you've got in the fence, so rather than tying it off here and having a 250 metre floodgate, uh, We've, we've got 150 metres that way back to the strainer and on the other end I think it's something similar. But the longer the strain, the more flex you got on your wire, the better it is. So this is, if you like, the hinge point at the start where the wire is supposed to start flexing. It's not actually the floodgate itself. You've got to set your two hinge points up well out of your flooded area. That's correct, that's correct. We're going to get a little bit of water running in here, which is not ideal, but this post being as far in the ground as it is, what we've got on the surface here is not an issue. But that's you do want it, running off the track here, it's, it? it's running down the, the graded area on the fence line. Yeah. But you do want these points, uh, preferably, you know, 15 or 20 metres either side of where the floodgate starts. All right, let's go and start having a look at this floodgate design because it's blown me away. Let's do that. Now Ash, this is the first post in what people might refer to as your floodgate and there's a few important features. Absolutely. Now the first thing, water flowing from the left to the right, people so are going to say... from here to there? From here through there. People are going to say you've got your strut on the wrong side. So what's the reason for that, mate? The fact is that obviously we've got a star picket suspended by the top only, those two chain links. Uh -huh. So this has got a hinge up. If I had the strut on the other side, it would restrict the actual fence hinging up. So it's a bit of a compromise. Ideally, 
it should be on the down on the downstream side but it's going to interfere with your flood gate so we're going to give this post some extra strength by having it on the wrong on, on this side will increase the strength but it's it's not ideal yeah it's, it is it's a compromise now ash in typical style you've brushed over something that you've set up that i think is absolute genius and it's these chain links can we have a closer look absolutely so the two chain links first of all you have a full chain link here which is welded vertically onto the post the second chain link is the one that's onto the star picket now that has the bottom cut out of it it's a bit hard to see but the bottom of that link is cut out and the top of the link angles slightly away from parallel with the star picket and that's so if, the, if they're hanging off the bottom it's fine but if the, what this one wants to hang off the top you see the link goes into the middle there so that's why you need the bottom cut out of that chain link because there's upward pressure on this star picket because it's in a low point therefore the chain link's going to sit up against the top now you also twitch these posts onto the wire pretty tight yeah that's correct the um the little clips we use instead of on a normal post you'd only go once around the wire so mm -hmm. it gives a little bit of movement so everything can move here because this star picket is hinged at the top there's nothing really to stop it moving a certain amount up and down the wire at the bottom Particularly so we, if that bottom wire is pulling up on it like it is it is yeah so to keep this post reasonably vertical and firm we've done the second lap around the wire with the clip with the post clip so with floodgates counterintuitively twitch off tighter than you normally would absolutely I'll keep it keep it reasonably firm now the next post along ash is a little bit different the first thing is there's no strut here that's and correct the wire's hanging different that's correct. Uh, we only put the angle struts on where there are high water flow area. So you may have two or three channels with a little rise between the two channels. We leave the fence as a, as a swinging flip up fence. Yeah. But we don't, there's no point. This post still in the ground 1.4, concreted in, low water flow area. It doesn't need a strut, just a cost saving thing. Also, because it's on a little hump between channels, the downward pressure on this star picket is downwards. So it's hanging, at the, hanging down in the bottom of the link here, and therefore there's no point cutting the bottom of this link out because it's, oh, it's just hanging downwards. So in the workshop, you just weld two links onto the top of each post at a slight angle off, and only when you're dealing with a downward post would you cut the bottom out with an angle grinder. That's correct. When the pressure is upwards on the wires, and it, this star picket is, is, is wanting to hang in the top of that link, that you would cut the bottom out so it can hang square as was explained on the last one. So we're starting to come right down into the gully here now, aren't we Ash? And every single post now has a support strut on it. Correct, yep, we're in a high water flow area. Now you were saying before the water down here gets pretty high, be up almost to my neck you reckon? Absolutely, yeah, I think I've, I've got aerial shots of this where you can't see the second wire, the water flows about 150 mil down from the top of that post unbelievable now this is the lowest point of the fence yep there's one more ingenious but simple solution can you show us what that is at the bottom of this post here so what we've got here is the post right at the low point almost in the bottom we don't put it in the middle of the channel just on the bottom on the edge of the channel so the being the low point the problem i've got is that the whole fence is pulling upwards so therefore the fence would naturally sit like that and the cattle would move under the fence without any problem at all. So the only way I could think to do it was just get a bit of two mil tie wire, pull the post down, a simple hook like that, takes a fair bit, cattle rubbing on it won't push it open, but water flow, if it gets a stick or a branch or anything hits against it, it'll just flick that twitch undone, let the water flow. We'll come around a couple of days once it's dry enough to get around and pull it back down but it saves your fence getting washed over it's so much quicker and so much easier than coming back and having to re-fence this whole flood crossing so ash wire choice is important too isn't it and the length of wire is critical but also the type of wire yeah absolutely keep your strain as long as possible either end of your floodgate and, and if you had a normal fence would be three or four barbed wires I would still recommend using plain wire in your floodgate for the simple reason that it catches a hell of a lot less debris, sticks, branches, twigs, bushes and grass will shed so much easier off plain wire 
than it will off barb. So Ash, give us a summary of all your rules for a good effective floodgate in what is a really high volume water area. Well, if you can keep your wire or your strain as long as possible. So even if you've only got a floodgate that's 20 metres long, have your strain as 50 metres either side or even further. So keep the strain long. Have the appropriate wire, which I would suggest if your barb's going to be out of the, uh, the water flow, that's fine. But the, any wires that are going to be in the water flow, use plain wire. Mm -hmm. Support the posts that are on high pressure. And if they're not high pressure posts, so not a lot of depth of water, if it's only running this deep, you wouldn't support it as long as your posts are in deep. And ensure that your clips are double twisted on the swinging, hinging star pickets so that they're stabilised and don't slide up and down the wire. And you put these drill rods in a good one and a half metres into the ground and that's, for you, sort of a minimum depth that you would do for posts, isn't it? One and a half is ideal, that's, that's if you can. Uh, these drill rods are three metre drill rods and we've just cut a little bit off the top, I'd say, so they would be, you know, close, but minimum 1.2, um, one and a half, 1.5 is ideal. And your twitch at the bottom, so simple, but so effective. Yeah, just don't over twitch it. Just hook that together, because you want that to let go when the pressure comes on to the floodgate itself and wants to lift it up. We don't want that held down, putting too much pressure on the wire, because the, the water pushing the wire, if you've got a tree stuck on it, it's gonna put pressure on your wire, pressure on your clips. So you want that to release when the pressure comes on. So just a little half twitch is spot on. Well, this is clearly, mate, the best floodgate I have ever seen, and it's stood the test of time. It's been through several floods, and all you've had to replace is one little bit of two mil wire. Haven't even had to replace it, just got to tie it back on again. I've tied it onto the post so you don't lose it, you see? <laughs> ever the optimist. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Thank no you so much for showing us this. If you like this kind of content, don't forget, hit the little subscribe button because it makes a massive difference to the channel. We'll see you next week with something else. Ash, you've been amazing. Thanks very much. Thanks, Tim.